I think it's interesting that you've just said very clearly elimination was the best path because there was some confusion. I think last week I'm, I'm going to bring up a, a little quote, a tweet that you put out around the WHO that looked like – that. WHO, obviously I, I can look at an organisation like them and say they've been learning along the way as well. So of course they're going to come out saying on day one we think this, on day 12 we think this, on day 50 we think this because they're learning as they go. But it seems in recent times they well, there was a statement made about um, maybe lockdowns weren't the best way to go from here forward. I, I wasn't entirely sure on what they'd said about that, but I want to bring up a tweet you put out about that, which I can do here. Um, and you said, disappointed with this reporting by NewSub, told journalist I didn't have time to talk and had heard, hadn't had heard about the Nabarro quote, but suspected it wasn't relevant to New Zealand given what he'd previously said about New Zealand. Asked the journal to find someone else, they published me anyway. And they'd said, oh, no, the hell did you know that? Oh, the, the they've tweet, taken it off. They've taken it off. The tweet no longer exists. So there you go. There's a little win for you. Yeah. So so, so because you're happened? still you're still saying elimination, you you personally, yeah. but it sounds like the WHO is not talking about elimination. No. Or have I missed something? Yeah. Okay. So there's some some really so there's some quite important bits missing here. So the first is that the word lockdown is inappropriate <laughs> because it's being used to describe lots of different things. So when we think of you know what we went through at alert level four was a, was was a form of lockdown, right? Um, there are other countries who have used stricter measures, um, so strict or strict lockdowns like we had, without putting any financial um, things in place. So obviously, it's very hard for people to stay at home if they actually can't afford to stay at home, right? Or if they're, you know, if they if they're actually not getting any wages at all. And then there are other countries that are using this word lockdown, and it and there's almost no restrictions at all. Like there's weird restrictions, and the, and so when there's been some people who've basically done some pretty poor research that have that say you know those countries or those states that have used lockdowns basically don't fare any better it's absolutely nonsense but it entirely depends on your definition of lockdown what's very clear though is that lockdowns lockdowns or restricting restricting movements are very blunt tools and they can be very destructive right especially if used badly so the who have always said that they are not a tool, you know, they don't agree that they are a tool that should be used all the time. They should be used if your health system is collapsing, you know, or, you know, or if you need to um, shore up the, the other things we know work really well, like access to, rap, you know, access to testing, uh, contact tracing and isolation of infectious people and their contacts, right? That is the way that you stop outbreaks like we have done with a couple of hours, right? Um, what has happened was the um so that is their stance their stance is they are a blunt tool to really only be used uh in certain contexts please use all of the other tools that we have all of the other slices of cheese right um what happened was uh this uh somebody who works for the who did a very long interview and basically you know kind of reiterated this point how they are a, a, essentially a blunt tool and so you know, don't use them or don't use them unless, unless necessary uh, and was kind of taken out of context. And so I was kind of annoyed because, the you know, I hadn't heard, I'd heard his, re so I'd heard he's done interviews before where he has talked about how New Zealand is, is a shining example of how to deal with COVID, right? Of using the lockdowns, our particular restrictions in order to buy time to, you know, make sure we had a testing and contact tracing system that was fit for purpose, those kinds of things. And so, um, then what was then he obviously made did this long interview and basically was talking about the UK was talking to a UK magazine or, or newspaper about the UK uh, and it was kind of taken all that context and then became a well you know New Zealand shouldn't be doing the kinds of things New Zealand is doing and so when the journalist called me I said look you know I haven't heard his latest quotes it would surprise me if he if it had any relevance to New Zealand because the WHO have come out very clearly in support of our approach we are a shining example, right? Uh, and then, yeah, I got basically, Susie Wiles says it's irrelevant and then loads of people piled on and it's like, well, and it turned out, of course it was irrelevant. <laughs> and they yeah. didn't mean us. And, and I think you know, that I think within and, a couple of days, he'd also said, this is, I wasn't talking about New Zealand. But um, it's, it's um, I don't know if you feel that it's a good thing, but it's quite nice, I think, to see that News Hub's taking that down. So there's an acknowledgement there that they got that wrong, wasn't it? Yeah, and I did get, I did get a call from the journalist, very apologetic that, um, that he had, 
that he had put it up. <laughs> he was like, I didn't realize you didn't mean you didn't want to be quoted. I was like, well, how do you think it looks when a woman who's already getting harassed online says, I didn't read the comment, but here's my, you know, I didn't read the piece, but here's my comment anyway. So he was like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> 